the story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. Whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trusts. I will exercise my art solely for the cure of my victims. The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro Goldwyn Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now, this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York, the nerve center of medical progress, where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital, where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. Dr. Kildare. Hmm? Oh, oh, hello, Millie. Why the shh? What's up? Could I speak to you a moment, Dr. Kildare? Well, of course. Come in the reception room. No one will see us. Why, Millie, how clandestine of you. Dr. Kildare, my motives are completely above board. <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> What's your problem, Millie? Well, it, it's Dr. Gillespie. Now what? I think his mind is going. What? Well, he's a little past the age when he could be falling in love, isn't he? Not as long as he can open his eyes, he isn't. <laughs> Why? Well, I just happened to pass by, and I heard him calling a florist this afternoon, and I couldn't help overhearing what he was saying. Millie, you should never eavesdrop on conversations that don't concern you. I told you you were seeing too much of Nosy Parker. Whatever Dr. Gillespie was doing was none of the business of the, the nurses or the staff of Blair General. What was he doing? Yeah, well, he told the florist he wanted some sweet peas for a charming young lady. Those were his own words. Charming young lady, he said. Sweet peas. Living dangerously, isn't he? And furthermore, he told me to cancel all his afternoon appointments at the hospital because he had a very important house call to make. Now, what do you make of that? I don't know what to make of it, but the thought of Dr. Gillespie sneaking off to date a young lady completely fascinates me. I think I'll stop by his office and see what I can find out. Gilday, why are you hanging around my office? I've got some thinking to do and you're interfering with it. What are you doing this afternoon? I'm working. What I do every afternoon. Got on your best suit, haven't you? Well, what the heck business is it of yours if I have? Fresh haircut, too. I get a fresh haircut every week. Go tend to your patients and never mind me. Oh, none of my patients need me this afternoon. Thought I might persuade you to go out someplace with me. I'm busy this afternoon. Oh, professionally or uh, otherwise? Why, Jimmy Kildare, you think I am leading a double life? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Ah, oh, come on now. Sure you do. You know you do. <laughs> no, it's just that you know, seeing you all spruced up like you are, and <laughs> seeing that glint in your eye and putting two and two together, well, I... Uh... <laughs> well, well, well. well, I guess you got me dead to rights, Jimmy. There's nothing for me to do but confess. There is a woman in my life. Ah, attractive? Devilishly attractive. Brunette or blonde? Redhead. Well, we are living dangerously. <laughs> Care to come along and meet her? Oh, I certainly would. Okay. Put on your best suit and get a fresh haircut and meet me downstairs. Oh, now, wait a minute. I don't do that for my own day. Ah, you don't know how to live, Jimmy. In my day, we really knew how to make a lady feel important and sought after. If you want to come with me, you'll have to do as I do. Well, it sounds pretty silly, but I'll do it. I'll meet you downstairs in an hour. Oh, 
Good afternoon, Dr. Gillespie. Good afternoon, Miss Henderson. Uh, this is my friend, Dr. Kildare. Oh, I'm so happy to meet you, Miss Henderson. Mm. Dr. Gillespie has told me so much about Come you. Come in. Just what did Dr. Gillespie tell you about me? <laughs> well, right. well, I realize you're a little early. What did Dr. Gillespie tell you about me, Dr. Kildare? Well, not very much, but enough to give me the idea. Hey, is Caroline ready for us, Miss Henderson? Really? I'm not deaf, Dr. Gillespie. Yeah, that is the whole trouble. Yes, Carolyn's expecting me. I'll go right in. This way, Jimmy. Come in. Hello, Carolyn. Why, hello, Dr. Gillespie. Thanks for the flowers. They came a little while ago. Well, I'll be happy. Uh, sometimes I wish you were. Uh, this is my friend, Dr. Kildare. Jimmy, this is Carolyn Shelley. Hello, Carolyn. I'm very happy to meet you. I have been telling Dr. Kildare about you and me, Carolyn. We're going to be married, you know, Dr. Kildare. <laughs> really? Yes, as soon as I'm 20. Yes, I met Carolyn when she was born, and it was love at first sight. Well, I can certainly see why. And so, every so often, I pay a visit. What's that book you're reading, Carolyn? It's Beauty and the Beast. Oh, sort of, uh... Like uh, you and Dr. Gillespie, isn't it? Yeah, very funny. Very, very <laughs> funny. Yes, yes, yes. Carolyn, how do you feel? I'm pretty good. Except I've got sort of a tummy ache. Huh? Miss Henderson said I ate too much candy yesterday. Uh -huh. hmm. You feel as if you had a temperature? Now, Carolyn, tell me if this... <laughs> it hurts, does it? <laughs> Carolyn, <laughs> bend your right knee. That's it. Oh! Uh -huh. Kildare, uh, take a look at these abdominal muscles, will you? Mm -hmm. You're right, Doctor. What's the matter? Oh, don't worry, Carolyn. Don't you worry. We know just what to do for it. You take a nap now, and I'll be back to see you a little later. Yes, Dr. Gillespie. You know, that's a chronic appendix. Better watch it. Let's talk to Miss Henderson. Uh, Carolyn's parents are separated. I think Miss Henderson had better call them, hey, if there's any change for the world. I'm here in the sitting room, Dr. Gillespie. What did you say about Carolyn? She has a chronic appendix. She may need an operation. Oh, nonsense. She ate too much candy yesterday, and I told her while she was doing it that this would happen. All that child needs is a good dose of castor oil. Oh, please, no castor oil. Not while she has symptoms of appendicitis. It's an old-fashioned remedy, but it's always been a good one. No, 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 Miss Henderson, no. I definitely do not want her given castor oil. She's only to have very light food. If the pains in her stomach continue or her temperature goes up, you call me immediately. Oh. Where's the girl's mother? She's taken a group of models up to Boston for a fashion show. Oh, I see. Well, if I don't hear from you before, I'll be back in the morning to see Carolyn again. Come on, Jane. Oh, uh, nice to have met you, Miss Henderson. <clears throat> yes. We'll keep a close watch on her for a day or two. It's a darn shame about her parents. Her mother is a designer. Her father's a writer. Lives in Connecticut someplace, rather. The two careers just got in the way of the marriage. Hmm. What's the mother's name? Doreen Shelley. Miss Henderson didn't look as though she had very much confidence in what you were saying. I don't know. I don't know. I think we should try and locate Mrs. Shelley ourselves, just in case. Yes. Hmm. Boston, Dr. Kildare. Thank you. Hello? Hello, is this Mrs. Shelley? Yes. Who is this? Well, this is a Dr. Kildare at Blair General Hospital in New York. Oh, yes? What is it, Dr. Kildare? Uh, this is just a routine call, Mrs. Shelley. I visited your daughter this afternoon with Dr. Gillespie. Oh. She has an upset stomach. It may not be anything, but we wanted to be sure we could reach you. Well, I think I'd better come back in the next plane. I'll be in around midnight. Uh -huh. Where can we reach Mr. Shelley? Oh, You'll have to try the hotels in Greenwich, Connecticut. I, I I don't know exactly where he's staying. All right, Mrs. Shelley. We were worried because both of you were out of town. I see. 
Well, Dr. Gillespie has always been a worrier. I'll check with you when I get in. Goodbye. Did you get it? Oh, yes. I knew if I stepped out of here for a minute, the call would come through. What'd she say? Said she'd take the next plane back. Said we could try and locate Mr. Shelley at the hotels in Greenwich. She didn't know where he was. Miss Henderson hasn't called, so I guess Carolyn hasn't changed. Hello? This is Nellie Henderson. Who is this? This is Dr. Kildare. Uh, can you come over right away, Dr. Kildare? Something's happened to Carolyn. Something's happened to Carolyn. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hung up. Who was it? Miss Henderson. She said something happened to Carolyn. Oh, you better get over right away to see the child. I'll make arrangements for an emergency operation. I want you to operate. How can I? We don't have permission from either of the parents. Well, I'll try and reach the father by telephone. You take the ambulance and get Carolyn over here. She had a seizure of pain at her waist. It wasn't anywhere near her appendix. It was at her waist. I I gave her a dose of castor oil. You were specifically told not to give her castor oil. How dare you take it upon yourself to ignore a doctor's orders like that? I didn't that. think it was her appendix. A little while ago, she broke out in a rash, and her temperature went up. Oh, here's her room. All right, bring out some towels and cold water for me. Bring some ice cubes. Yes, Dr. Cube. Hello, Carolyn. How do you feel? I can't move. I can't move. I know, and that's all right. Now, you just lie still and let me look at you. Where's Dr. Gillespie? Oh, he's waiting for you at the hospital. He wants you to come over there and be close by him. Now, won't that be nice? I'm afraid of the hospital. That's where people go to die. Oh, who told you that? Miss Henderson. Oh, Miss Henderson hasn't been in a hospital in recent years, or she'd know that that's where people go to live. Uh, honey, in that hospital, you're going to be like a, like a fairy princess. Dr. Gillespie and I will fight each other to the death to see who's going to be your Prince Charming. <laughs> oh, sleepy. Oh, sleepy. Here's the towel and the ice, Doctor. All right. You help me pack this ice on her side. Yes, Doctor. Yeah. There. Now, keep putting the wet towels on her head. She mustn't go to sleep. Do you understand? She no. must not go to sleep. Yes, Dr. Kildare. Now, where's the telephone? In the hall. I'll be right back. Dr. Gillespie, please. Oh, I'll put him right on, Dr. Kildare. Hello? Oh, Dr. Gillespie, I think her appendix is ruptured. Oh, I was afraid of that. I mean, she has a rash. It could be scarlet fever or it could be the results of peritonitis. I don't know. We're going to have to operate immediately. We've been able to reach the girl's father. I located this hotel, but he was out. He'll call as soon as he comes in. How about Mrs. Shelley? I left word at the airport for her to phone as soon as she lands. Well, then I'll get Carolyn right over there. And if you know any prayers... You'd better start saying them. In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare, and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Dr. Gillespie? Doreen, I have the papers right here for you to sign. Yes, of course. Is she, is she all right? 
Oh, we won't know who I am. That's right. Here, you, you sign your name right there in the bottom line. There. Oh. Did you reach Jack? Yeah, he's on his way down. Oh, it'll break Jack's heart if, if anything happens to Carolyn. Well, Kildare's the finest young surgeon I know. Carolyn's in good hands. You, you heard from Jack recently? Not too recently, no. Ah, I see now. How old were you when you two got married? Well, you remember, I was 16. Ah. Jack was just past 18. Everyone said we weren't old enough, but we both were so sure. And we managed to talk our parents into letting us get married. Yeah, yeah, too bad it hasn't worked out, brother. Well, it worked out for a while. And then Jack's stories weren't selling. I became a model and then a fashion designer. And Jack got sensitive about me paying the bills for a while. I don't see what it matters who pays the bills if two people love each other. Uh, Jack Shelley's on his way up, Dr. Gillespie. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, I'm so glad. Uh, we can go up to the reception room, wait there. Dr. Gillespie, how is... Doreen. Jack. How is Carolyn? She's going to be operated on right away. We won't know until then. Come on, we'll go upstairs and wait. <laughs> Scalpel, sponge, hemostat, tie, scalpel, what seems like they've been in there so long? Now, don't you worry, don't worry. Carolyn couldn't be in better hands. Oh, you feel so helpless, don't you? She was crying for you when she first arrived here, Jack. She seemed disturbed because you hadn't been home. She kept asking when you were coming. Things like this are rough on kids, I know. Yeah. But Doreen and I thought if we were going to separate, well, it would be easier on her now than when she's older. I was very disappointed when you two broke up. Somehow I thought you were going to make a success of your marriage. I don't think I ever saw two youngsters anymore in love. Well, we... We used to have a lot in common. We don't have anything in common anymore. You have a child in common. You have all the plans and dreams you started out with. You have a future in common. If you only had the sense to hold on to it. Doreen doesn't need me anymore. I think she does. You're right, Dr. Gillespie. I do. Uh, Well, the truth of the matter is that Things haven't been working too well for me, and... Well, I'm not going to have my wife supporting me. Ah, all the stubborn, selfish, stiff-necked attitude. Jack, I thought you had more common sense. Marriage is a partnership, isn't it? You help each other out in a partnership, don't, don't you? Are you going to make your child unhappy? And your wife unhappy? And yourself unhappy just because you're too pig-headed to accept a little help? Well, I have my pride. Ah, pride. It's a doggone expensive luxury sometimes. It is, particularly when you buy it at the expense of love. Well, I, I never thought about it like that. Well, that's the way it looks to Doreen and and, and to me. Doesn't it, Doreen? Yes, it does. Yeah. Jack, that's exactly the way it looks to us. Mm. Well, it's complete. How is, is she? she? All right. The operation was a success. Oh, thank you. Can't tell you that she'll live, though. We won't know that for at least three days. Three days? It will take three days before the crisis will be over. Can we see her? Oh, she's under a sedative. You won't be able to talk to her. Oh, but if I, if I can just see you. Yeah, me too. All right, come with me. Doctor Kildare. Oh, it's you, Millie. Yeah, come in the reception room where we won't be heard. <laughs> You know, Millie, pretty soon people are going to start talking about us. Dr. Gillespie's been at it again. At what again? I heard him on the telephone ordering flowers again. This time it was carnations. Um... I couldn't hear who he was sending them to because he pushed the door shut. 
I almost caught my nose in it. Mm. You know what I heard him ordering this morning? What? A set of Grimm's fairy tales. <gasps> he's the strangest man. Do you think he's in his second child? Oh, I'm positive of it, Millie. Yeah, I thought as much. Well, now, if you'll excuse me, I want to have a word with him about a patient of ours. Mm -hmm. I want one of those dolls that wets its pants. Can you send one to cancer? My doctor, Leonard Gillespie. Kill that. Get out of here. Go on, get out. Hello, hello. No, I don't want a doll I can give a permanent to. What would I want with a doll I could give a permanent to for? Look, I want a doll that wets its pants. It's for a little girl, and anyhow, it's none of your business. Look, I don't want to make a big production out of this. I want a doll for a little girl. Do you want to send it out for me, or shall I call some star that will? One of the things I love about you is your supreme tact. Oh, go on, sit on a scalp. Does the kind that wets its pants get a permanent, too? Well, all right, I'll send out one of those. Uh, to Dr. Leonard Gillespie at Blair General Hospital. Thank you. Goodbye. Ah, oh, sprach. It used to be that you could just call up and order a doll, but not anymore in this age of miracles and science. So what are you doing up here eavesdropping? What do you want? I just thought you might like to go up and see Carolyn with me. I would, I would. How is she? Setting up today, making a wonderful recovery. Oh, well, now let's go and see her. My mother phoned a little while ago, and they're coming over, too. I'm anxious to see that family get back together again. Yeah, so am I. But that's a little out of my line. That I can't accomplish with a scalpel. Jimmy, my boy, when you've reached my age, you'll find you've accomplished something like that more times than you'd think possible. There's more kinds of heart trouble and more ways of healing it than you'd ever realize now. Come on, let's go and see the princess. <laughs> Dr. Gillespie. Good afternoon, Dr. Kildare. How are you, Carolyn? How do you feel, young woman? I feel fine. Dr. Gillespie, can a girl marry two men? At once? Mm-hmm. Oh, not without getting into an awful lot of trouble, no. Oh, that's too bad. Because I thought I might marry both you and Dr. Kildare. Oh, you did, Ed. You, you think he's prettier than I am? Well... I do think he's prettier, mm -hmm. but... Out of the mouths of babes. But I think you're smarter, Dr. Gillespie. Ah, uh, out of the mouths of babes. Come in. Mommy! Daddy! Hello, darling. Well, how's my girl today? I'm better. When can she go home, Dr. Kildare? A few days now. There. Did you hear that, Carolyn? Mm -hmm. We have a surprise for you, darling. Miss Henderson's gone for good. And Daddy's coming home to live with you and me. Oh, Daddy! Oh, I love you so! I love you so! Oh, baby, just you wait till you see what we're going to do. Come on, kill there. Mm. Kind of uh, gets you to see people that happy, doesn't it? Ah, nonsense. Now, don't go turning into a sentimentalist, kill there. Oh, your eyes were getting a little misty in there. <laughs> Fiddly dee. You look pretty close to tears to me. Oh, from five feet. Mm, your voice is all rough. I am catching a cold. You're a very inconsistent man. I'm just not a sentimentalist. That doll you ordered just arrived, Dr. Gillespie. Oh, well, take it in to Carolyn. Well, yes, Dr. Gillespie. You know, Dr. Gillespie, you're a big phony. <laughs> that is a very shrewd diagnosis, Kildare. A very shrewd diagnosis. <laughs> In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare.
now, once again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Dr. Kildare, do you know what Dr. Gillespie's doing now? What's he doing now? He's playing with dolls. He is? Uh-huh, he's in Carolyn's room. Go in and see for yourself. Well, I will. No way. Why? I'm the doctor on this case. What on earth are you doing? I'm feeding this doll water. Well, what does it look like I'm doing? He's trying to get the doll to work. It won't work. Yeah, these dolls are phonies. Fakes. So, oh, oh, <laughs> the darn thing broke. Confounded, I'm all wet. Oh, <laughs> could be, Dr. Gillespie. Could mm. be. Now, let's give the doll a permanent. Yes, I'd love to see you give a doll a permanent. All right, all right. Now, you've had your fun. Now, leave me alone. Just as you say, Doctor. As a matter of fact, I'll promise you, right here and now, I won't bother you again. Until next week. You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Gene Holloway and directed by William P. Russo. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Lorene Tuttle, B. Benaderet, Marlene Ames, and Jack Edwards. Dick Joy speaking. (laughs) 